So, three, two industrious PEA students are trying to find the distance across the Squamscott River. After marking points A and B 60 meters apart on one bank, they cite the powder house P on the opposite bank and measure angles PAB and PBA to be 54 and 114 degrees, respectively. This enables them to calculate the altitude from P to the baseline AB to the nearest meter. What was their result? So, it was 60 meters apart, so and you use the law of sines. And also, because 54 and 114, this is a triangle, uh, the remainder would be one, would be 12 if you added those together and subtracted it from 180. Uh, and then law of sine, 60 over sine 12. And then you want to find, you're trying to find the altitude, but first you have to find this side, B. And, uh, equals B over sine 54. Then you do proportions and then 60 times sine 54 divided by sine 12 equals B sine 12 divide both sides. Oh yeah. Would that be that be? Okay, so you found that side right there. Yeah. Okay, got it. You find that side. And uh, you do 60 sine 54 and then you divide it by sine 12, and that equals 233.47. Then finding the altitude, you do sine 66 equals x divided by 233.47. You multiply both sides, then this equals 213.285 meters. Uh, if sine A is known to be uh, 0.96, then what would it say about cosine A? What is it? What if it is also known that A is an obtuse angle? All right, so we found that sine A is equals uh, 0.96, and then we found the angle for A to be 73.73. That's right there, not triangle and that's in quadrant one. And then cosine A equals point two, not, uh, two eight. And then, so that would be for, for the top question. And then for the obtuse angle, you put in uh, in the second quadrant and you find that sine. Did you use there? Oh, there it is, sorry. Yeah. Sine 106.27 equals cosine uh, negative 2.8. All right, so when you do the obtuse angle, what happens to the cosine? Uh, it becomes negative. Perfect. All right, pause. I, I, oh my God. Find components for the ve vector projection of 12, 5 onto a negative 9, 12. Well, I, um, found, I found first the dot pro, I first did use the um, equation or formula. And then I found, because it's the dot product of vectors u and v divided by the magnitude of vector v squared times v. So then I found the dot product of u and v, which came up to negative 48. And let's see what I do. And then I found, I found the magnitude of v by doing the Pythagorean theorem, which came out to 63. So it was negative 48 over... And then the square root is 63, 7.93. And then so it's negative 48 divided by 7.93 squared. And then that comes out to this over here, which is, hmm. Okay, so. And then, because you divide this and you multiply, that comes out to point, negative 0. 0.763 multiplied by vector 912, and I got this. I was, but I will be the bearer of bad news that there is a slight clerical arithmetic error here which messed up the whole answer. So, can anybody tell me where the error was? Oh. Tyler. You found the magnitude of v instead of u? No, we want to find the magnitude of v. That's true right there. That's magnitude v. Oh. Tom. Yeah, this should be in parentheses here. Uh, oh. 
So what it, that I didn't catch that right away, but when I thought about the magnitude of nine twelve, that is a Pythagorean triple. So nine twelve. What's the third side got to be? Which is not a big deal. That'll be fifteen. So therefore, we should get fifteen squared. And what's negative forty-eight divided by fifteen squared? Some of the calculator. Negative point two one three instead of the negative point seven six three. And then go ahead and multiply those out to get your answers here. So negative 0.213 times negative 9, be a positive. 1.92. And then negative 2.55. That's for shameful. I don't think that's that big of a deal. You made a slight. Arithmetic error, it happens. If it was on a test, I would get most credit. Two, number, number seven. Two power ones are stationed at locations P and Q, which are 45 kilometers apart. Each warden cites the forest fire at F, given that angle FPQ is 52 degrees and angle FQP is 43 degrees. Find the distance from F to the nearer warden to the nearest 0.1 kilometers. So this is the original like picture with the given information. And you can figure out which one is closer by the angle. So this one has a smaller angle right here. So this is the shorter one. So this fireman is closer to the fire. So, and then you can take since you have t these two angles, then you can subtract from 180 to get this angle. So then after that, then you do law of sines. Sine 43 over x. 43 over x equals sine 85 over 45. And then you just proportion it out. And then solve for x, and you get 30.8 kilometers. Pause. Possibly. Okay, so Jamie's out here at 08. Okay, and she is getting to point D. Now, this is the lake shore right here, and she is going from this point out in the lake to the shore somewhere, we don't know where, and she could travel that at 10 units per hour. That's what it says right here. And then from there, she could take a motorbike at 20 units per hour from P to D. Okay, this is a pretty tough question. This question is actually about a calculus level question. The difference is we're gonna do this by graphing and in calculus, you would do this by using calculus, differentiation, which I'm not gonna go over. So the main idea here is you can set it up. So we're gonna call this, and they actually say this point right here is x comma zero. If that's x comma zero, what would this length right here be? X, call that x. Okay, this point out here is 12 comma negative three. If that's 12 negative three, what would this length right here be? What? 12 minus x, this whole length here is 12, so that would be 12 minus x. Okay. Does it say that zero is the point? It says that um, this point up here is zero, eight. And it says it's eight right here. That's, oh. that, yeah, that's O would be the origin. Good question. So now, what I want to do is I want to find the distance from J to P. How would I set up an equation to find the distance from J to P? Oh, come on. Is it that early? X squared plus X squared. So Pythagorean theorem, right? So we go, this distance right here would be square root 
x squared plus 8 squared. You okay with that? That's that distance. Okay. What would this distance right there be? Just like I can calculate a ready form. Kyle? Square root 12 minus x squared plus 3 squared. Square root of 12 minus x squared plus 3 squared. Okay, I don't care to simplify this because we're just using a calculator to graph it anyways. That's your distance for each one of those segments. Now, we know, hopefully, that distance equals rate times time, right? We want to find the shortest travel time. So time equals distance over rate. So this is a distance. What's the rate along that distance? 10. So if we divide this by 10, that would be our time along this stretch. How do you know it's 10? What's that? How do you know it's 10? Because we did distance divided by rate. This is our distance. That's our rate. How do you know 10 is your rate? It tells you. Oh. Okay. Okay, what's the rate for this second part of the traveling path? What's that? 20. So what should I do with the second expression there? Divide by 20. That's the time for the second part. If I add them together, I get my total time. Okay with that? Okay, at this point, and to save a little bit of time, um, I'm not going to graph it all in the calculator. I'm going to use what somebody else did here. So let's do this. Well, I just brought some student work. So basically what the student did here is they graph this, which is what we had here, on a calculator. Okay. When they graphed it, they got a graph that looked just, it was just a, a curve. And they found the minimum point down here somewhere. How do you graph that? You're just going to have y equals and then just start typing that stuff in. with all, like, all that with parentheses. We've done a problem like this before last year. It's just about as intense. They, just wanted, they don't want you to forget it because when you get the calculus, it's good to have this, these kind of tools. And you find the minimum. Now, the minimum value on the graph was 4.22 comma 1.32. So if that's x, if 4.22 is x, what does that represent in our problem? How long what is? Not time. It's this distance. This is x right here. So this is our minimum x. So to get our minimum time, 4.22 should be that length in units. It's not in kilometers or miles. So that would be our minimum units for here. And this is our minimum time. So the minimum time here would be 1.32 hours. Okay. This problem, it's uh, the cosine graph, and actually it starts at Q, that's the center of it, sorry, and the Y is equal to 0 0.7431, the dotted line right here, right there, the dotted line right there. <laughs> I didn't realize it's making actual lightsaber noises. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> because when we, it's told us here that Q is Q is equal to four forty two um, and uh, zero point seven four three one. So we wrote that right there, right there, and. What we did is, because this represents, this graph represents a unit circle, and the P is the 180 minus, it's the negative of it, because it's the second quadrant, right? I don't know. I forget. There's but circle right there. What? You circle right there on that. I know the unit circle's right there. I just forget what it means. Okay. All right. Um, so... It's the negative portion of it because it's cosine negative 42, and you get that point. That point. And 
then in order to get R and S, you have to use uh, 360, because 360 minus 42, you get it in this quadrant right here, the cosine quadrant, and then 360 plus 42, you get it right here, and that represents R and S. So you would get, and the Y stays the exact same because it's along the dotted line. So and then you sit 360 minus 42 is equal to 318, 360 plus is equal to 402. Um, let A, negative 7, negative 4, and B, 7, 4, and consider the equation PA times PB equals 0. Describe the configuration of all points P, X, Y that solve this equation. So we put A and B as the diameter of a circle um, and um, all points that would be uh, perpendicular would be on this circle because of the right tri or the right angle uh, 90 degree angle they make. Uh, so we found the equation of this circle. We found uh, the radius from the origin to be right here, uh, which is also square root um, 65. So we, we uh, graph that, and then this is the equation right here. Do you want, are you asking a question? Tell yes. me to stop. <laughs> What's your call? question? Yeah. <laughs> um, how did you know it was perpendicular? Because uh, the points on a circle Equal 90 but degrees. how did you know it wanted a point that was perpendicular? What from that question it, told you? Well, because it's a dot product. Okay. You already get that? I know, I know you got it right away, okay. but that dot product equals zero automatically means those two vectors got to be perpendicular. 